Howdy there, people of the internet. It's me again, Will. I'd like to welcome you back to another video. Today, we're taking a look at Colby Ryan and what took place this past Labor Day weekend with Colby Ryan. In case you're not familiar with who Colby Ryan is, let me give you a brief synopsis of who he is and how he's even newsworthy to anyone out there in the world. Colby Ryan is the sole surviving child of Lori Vallow Daybell. Now, in case you're not familiar with her, Lori Vallow Daybell is the lady mother in Idaho who is currently incarcerated in Idaho and is awaiting trial to on charges that she had her two youngest children, JJ and Ty Lee, murdered because they were possessed, because they had dark spirits in them. She most likely had her brother Alex, you know, Cox, you know, her her brother, um, actually commit the murders themselves. And then they buried them um, on her soon-to-be husband's property, Chad Daybell's farm property. Now, back to Colby Ryan. This past weekend, Colby Ryan was arrested on two very serious felony charges. And if these charges, you know, are, are true... Colby Ryan is looking at quite a few years in prison, and I'll get to those charges in just a minute. But he would he would spend probably, you know, a, a, you know, at, if he's convicted out in the state of Arizona out of Maricopa County, you know, because this case actually happened in Mesa. If he's convicted of the charges, he is looking at anywhere from 15 to 19 years in prison if convicted on both charges. What was he arrested for? He was arrested for two felony counts. The first count is assault and battery, domestic violence. And according to the notes that you know, have been released online from the, you know, from the officers who responded to the actual case at the hospital, the victim in this case showed, you know, that there were bruising um, you know, on the neck area and on the um, left cheek area. And that an actual assault, uh, they said, you know, had happened. The second charge that he, felony charge that he is facing is sexual assault. Now, according to the actual victim itself, Colby Ryan and her were at her apartment watching movies that day, this Labor Day week, past Labor Day weekend, when the two of them started to kiss, fondle each other, and, you know, and heavy petting, you know, it, this is what is in the actual statements itself. And she decided that she wanted to stop. And she verbally told him that she didn't want to go any further. But Colby didn't stop. She point blank says in her statement and in the audio recording that she recorded the next day because she went to her bedroom, locked her, her door to keep Colby away from her. And Colby fell asleep on the actual couch. The following morning, she recorded him in, in, in a you know um, one on one, and before you ask about the legal ramifications of it, of audio recording someone in the state of Arizona, it's a one person consent state. Only one person has to consent to the actual audio recording. It does not require that both individuals in the, in a situation like this consent to actual recording. So the recording is admissible in court. Colby admits on the audio recording to raping her, basically, you know, you know uh, and saying that he was sorry for what he did. She then turned the evidence over to the police department, and um, she underwent an actual um, examination by a nurse at the hospital, 
where the police responded. You know, I had high, I had high hopes for Colby Ryan that there was at least one individual in this Vallow Cox family that was sane. And it turns out every one of them is absolutely batshit insane. Sorry for my language. Where will it go from here? I don't know. As of the date of this recording, Colby Ryan has not had the opportunity at this point to enter in you know, a guilty or not guilty plea, nor has he had a bond hearing. So it remains to be seen if he'll actually be you know receive bond. If he is able to receive bond, can he bond out? Will someone bond him out? Will the grandparents or somebody you know come forth with the money and sign a you know security bond to get him out of jail? I don't know. But at this point he is in there in the Maricopa County, you know, jail, awaiting, you know, the, the actual next step in the hearings for this. These are pretty serious allegations against the you know, the young man. But not a single person in the entire Cox or Vallow family is sane. I've never I've never heard of a family like this. And, and if you look at the Daybell family, how, where the hell's the the sane individual and all that? It looks like the only sane ones are the ones who've been murdered. Because everybody else is absolutely insane. Well, thank you for joining me today, ladies and gentlemen. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a comment down below and tell me, you know, why you didn't like it. And if you think I got something factually wrong as of the, the 7th of September, you know, 2022, if I got something factually wrong, please leave a comment down below and tell me. I am basing this entire video on the following statements released by the DA and the Sheriff's Department and a statement that was released by the actual family of his actual arrest. Again, if you think I got something factually wrong, I would love to, you know, to hear from you down in the comment section below. Thank you very much for joining me today, and you stay safe out there.